So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian Yuan. I'm a assistant professor from Michigan Technological University. Today, I will uh, present our work uh, titled Membership Inference Attacks and Defenses in New Network Pruning. So this is a joint work with my colleague, Lan Zhang. OK, so New Network has achieved outstanding performance in many areas in recent years. And with the recent advance in New Network, actually, we have observed that the size of New Network has been largely increased. If we go back and look at the, the New Network 10 years ago in 2012, actually, if we want to train a Alex net, we only need 61 uh, million parameters. But in the past two years, actually, the size of a new network has been increased to uh, 10 billion or even 10 trillion parameters. And uh, it will be really challenging to deploy such large size new network on some small device, uh, on resource constrained devices like our smartphones, our IoT devices, due to the limited computational memory or storage resources on these devices. So one of the promising uh, approach to address this challenge is new network pruning. So the basic idea of new network pruning is that, so given a dense new network, we remove the redundant parameters from this dense new network and derive a sparse new network. So there are two goals for uh, this new network pruning. First, we want to reduce the size of new network and speed up the inference time. Second, we want to minimize the loss of prediction performance. So to evaluate the, the, the performance of new network pruning, usually we will use two metrics. So first is efficiency, second one is prediction performance, such as accuracy. So most of uh, the new network uh, pruning approach actually want to find a good balance between this efficiency and uh, performance, uh, prediction performance. However, less attention has been paid to the privacy risk of new network pruning. So why do we concern about privacy in new network pruning? So first, let's take a look at the new network pruning pipelines. So uh, to derive a sparse new network, first, we need to train an original new network following the typical uh, training process. Then we will conduct pruning, which means that we will remove the redundant parameters from the dense new network. Since most of the pruning approach actually cannot achieve the comparable perfor uh, performance, prediction performance with the dense new network. So next step we want to do is to retrain the uh, new network on the same training data set. We call it fine tuning. And if we take a look at this fine tuning step, we will find out that actually in this fine tuning step, the prune model actually see the training samples more often. And also if we go back to like, talk, uh, take a look at the pruning process, we will find out that uh, this pruning process actually enforces a smaller number of parameters to achieve a similar accuracy. So which means that these two steps actually will increase the memorization of training samples and will aggregate the uh, privacy risk. So in this work, we focus on very essential privacy attack called the membership inference attack. So in the membership inference attack, the attacker wants to determine whether a given data sample was used in training. So what the attacker will do is that given a data sample, we will query this data sample to the new network and get the predicted confidence. So in our work, uh, we ask the following question. So after the process of training, pruning, and fine tuning, will the pruned new network become more vulnerable to membership inference attack? So since most of membership inference attack rely on the predicted confidence of new network, so first we will investigate the confidence uh, of the dense new network. So on the left hand side, we show the confidence level of the ground truth class uh, uh, of the dense new network trained on CIFAR 10 dataset to use the dense net architecture. Uh, this uh, red vertical curve indicates the average value of this confidence level of the members of the training data sets. This uh, blue vertical curve indicates the average uh, value of this confidence level for the non-members or uh, test data. We can see that there's a gap between these members and the non-members on the confidence levels. And the many uh, membership inference attack actually rely on this gap to infer the uh, data sample membership status. Then let's remove 70% of parameters in this dense new network. 
And on the right hand side, I show the uh, confidence level for this pruned new network. Similarly, we use this uh, red line to indicate the average value of confidence level for, for the uh, members, and the blue line indicates the, uh, the, the average value of confidence level for the non-members. We can see that actually the confidence gap between these members and the non-members is increased after pruning. Okay. Similarly, we, uh, we further investigate another matrix, we call it sensitivity. The sensitivity actually measures how much the model prediction will be changed if we slightly change the input samples. For example, we add some Gaussian noise to our input samples, and then we calculate the uh, sensitivity of our models. So on the left hand side, we show that for the dense models or the original neural network, uh, the gap between members and the non-members is very small. But if we remove 70% of parameters from this dense uh, neural network, and we can observe that actually the sensitive gap between members and non-members is increased. Okay. Uh, moreover, we take a further look at the confidence gap and the sensitive gap for each class. So on the left hand side, we show the confidence level for the original model on, 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 all, on different classes in the C10 data set. Here we show the uh, 10 classes here. And this red curve indicates the confidence gap between members and non-members for different classes. Okay, and the, the figure on the bottom shows the confidence level for the pruned models. Okay, and uh, on, uh, for the figures on the right hand side, we show the sensitivity gap between members and non-members for the original model and the pruned model. So uh, uh, after taking a look at this confidence gap and the sensitivity gap per class, we have two major findings. So first, both confidence and the sensitivity gaps are increased for most classes after pruning. Second, the increased uh, gap actually differ between, uh, among different classes. Okay, so motivated by these observations, we propose a new attack, membership inference attack called SAMI, or self-attention membership inference attack. So we hypothesize that the, inque the increased confidence gap and the sensitive gap among different classes actually can provide the final great evidence for membership inference attack. So most existing membership inference attack actually learns a single threshold of prediction confidence to determine the membership status which might not be sufficient for the new network pruning, so that we introduce this new network-based attack using the self-attention mechanism, or SAMI, called SAMI. And this uh, uh, self-attention mechanism is widely used in recent natural language processing problems or models. And uh, we leverage SAMI to actually to, to find out the specific confidence and the sensitivity information that the attack threshold should pay more attention to. Okay, uh, so, so we skip the, the, the details of our uh, uh, semi-attacks. We refer everyone to our uh, paper for more details. Okay, so next let's evaluate our proposed methods. So, so, uh, so in the evaluation, we investigate four representative new network pruning approach and the five different kinds of pruning sparsity levels from 0.5 to 0.9. 0.9 means that we remove 90% parameters from the dense models. And also we compared SAMIR with uh, the six existing membership inference attacks seven, uh, on seven popular data sets and uh, we evaluate our models on, the, on four new network architectures. Here are our results. First, we take a look at the privacy risks and the different pruning approach and the sparsity levels. So this colored curve indicates the attack accuracy for different pruned approaches and uh, sparsity levels. And this black curve indicates the attack accuracy on the original dense models. So first, we observe that so the most pruning approach actually results in increased attack accuracy, which means that actually the pruning process will increase the privacy risk. Okay, so next, we also observe that the attack accuracy may be decreased under, under a high sparsity level, say 0.9, means that we remove 90% of the parameters from the death models. And in that case, actually, uh, so, so most models actually cannot achieve the comparable uh, prediction accuracy than the death models, which means that if the, uh, the prune model can achieve the good 
prediction performance and efficiency, usually we will it will result in an increased privacy risk. Okay. So next, we compared our proposed semi-attack with the existing membership inference attack. So this red curve indicates the attack accuracy of our proposed semi-attack, and the curve in other colors indicate the attack accuracy of other uh, existing membership inference attack. We found out that in most cases, semi actually outperforms the existing membership inference attack on different pruning approach and the sparsity levels. So, uh, so one of the reasons why the STEMIA has a good performance is because STEMIA can actually better leverage the increased uh, confidence gap and the sensitive gap introduced by neural network pruning. So that we, here we present the relationship between these two gaps and the attack accuracy. On the left hand side figure, we show the relationship between the confidence gap and the attack accuracy. On the right hand side, we show the, sensitive gap, the relationship between sensitive gap and the attack accuracy. We can see there is a very strong correlation between these gaps and the attack accuracy, which means that the increased gaps introduced by this uh, new network pruning actually will result in the higher privacy risk. Okay, so far we talked about uh, the attack side. So next, I will briefly introduce the defense, our defense mechanism. We call it uh, peer-based uh, posterior balance defense, or PPP defense, uh, to against the membership inference attack. So the basic idea is that since we have the increased gaps introduced by the new network pruning, so in, the, in our defense, we just want to align the posterior distribution uh, predictions of different uh, input samples to mitigate such new uh, prediction behaviors. So again, I will skip the details for, for, the, for, uh, for the defense. Uh, please refer to our paper for more details. So he here is our result. Uh, so as I showed you before, so the uh, confidence gap will be increased after we do the pruning. But after we apply the PPT defense, actually such gap will be reduced. Similarly, on the, if we investigate the sensitive gap, so the sensitive gap will be increased after pruning, but will be reduced after our PBB defense. So we compared our defense with uh, three existing defense uh, using early stopping or differential privacy or adversary regularization. We found out that actually uh, PBB defense can outperform the existing defenses and achieve a better trade-off between the prediction accuracy and the model privacy. So to conclude our work, so we identified that so we uh, identified that the new network pruning actually will aggregate the uh, uh, privacy risks of the original model due to the increased confidence gap and the sensitive gap. So we propose SAMIA to predict membership inference attack uh, status by using the final grade prediction metrics, and SAMIA has the advantage in identifying the pruned model prediction divergence. And also, we propose the PPP defense to mitigate such privacy risk by narrowing down the divergences of the posterior predictions. So that's pretty much about our work. So please refer to the extended version for, for more details. So we post the extended version on archive, and also we release our code, so you can access code by, by, by scanning the, uh, the barcode on the right-hand side. Thank you for your listening.